Hey everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm so very excited to be starting this journey. So today I'm going to be starting off with this makeup look that I have on. We love a natural look. So if you guys want to see how this look came together and what products I use, please keep watching. If you see an extension popping out, no you didn't. But first I'm going in with the One Size Secure the Blur. If you don't know about her, you need to know about her. Miss Patrick Star did the dang thing with this blurring primer. I've really been loving the One Size Secure the Blur and the Elf Luminous Putty Primer together under my foundation. I usually get like yay big, yay big. Okay, and then, does this count as primer? Flawless filter? I don't know. This goes under my foundation too. So this is before foundation. So this product is new to me. Um, this was recommended by a friend. <laughs> this is the Shiseido Synchro Skin Radiant Lifting Foundation and it's oil free. And wow, all I can say is I'm impressed. She passed my test. I usually, like with my regular foundation, I mix in my Dior backstage with all of my foundation, but I haven't mixed her in with the Shiseido. I don't know if I want to do that journey today. I probably do. Normally what I usually do whenever I'm mixing my foundation with something cute like her, um, I place it right on top. So just one itty bitty drip. And I usually, fine. I was gonna say I usually don't put it on my skin, but on my chin, but we're doing it today. Actually pause. Look at this finish. Okay, we're living for her. I was really not sure about Shiseido and the foundation because I've never owned anything from Shiseido. Yeah, never. So I was really nervous to try this, but she has passed the test. Okay, actually, I feel like most of this is all new products for me because I just had a Chicago trip with my friend Katie. She's actually here on YouTube too, but um, most of these were recommended by her. Okay, so we sagged the Rose Ink. I have never heard of this brand and I feel like I'm pretty well versed in the makeup world. Wait, I don't do this. I don't do this yet. Okay, speaking of Chicago trip, we went into Ulta. The Ulta there literally made us lose our mind. But we went in and we were walking past a display and I heard a gasp and it was Katie freaking out about these nude sticks. And I was like, I have never heard of this in my entire life. And she's like, yes, you have. You had to have seen these somewhere. And I was like, okay, maybe I have. And then she pulled out the blush. I was like, okay, blush kind of sounds familiar. We get back to the hotel and I open up TikTok and literally the first thing on TikTok is a makeup influencer doing his makeup with the nude sticks contour blush and highlight i tried these out they are literally everything and more i'm using shade bondi babe for cream contour these blend like a dream and a half i usually go in and draw lines up and like i said i'm pretty fair so if you're more on the fairer side i would definitely suggest bondi babe Bonnie Bay, not babe. Okay, so I usually put it on my cheeks and then around my hairline. So this comes with a little blending brush at the end and at Ulta, at Ulta, not Sephora, um, we blended it with a little brush and it blended so cute. But yesterday I blended it with my beauty blender and I think I'm gonna stick to that because the finish was so pretty. So I usually just take my beauty blender and then I take the end of it and then start blending. Then always, always, always remember to do your makeup with a light hand and then you can go in later with more product. How many times did I just tap that and it's gone? Like it's melted into my skin. And then I'm taking the Nude Sticks um, Nudies Bloom in Bohemian Rose. This shade looks kind of scary, but this is part of their Glow 
blushes, cream blushes. Did I make this up? Anyway, this is what she looks like. Cute little moment. That even focus in, I don't even know. Anyway, I can swatch her. But on, hello? <laughs> can you see this? <laughs> okay, we're doing it right here. On, it looks really cute. A cute moment. Okay, she's flushed. She's melted into the bronzer. And then I also picked up the Hey Honey highlighter. I'm telling you when I put this on my hand to swatch, I literally passed away. I, I died there in the floor. Okay, this is the first time using my highlighter, so I haven't used her yet. Okay, fine. Can you see it? It's like a cute little glow. It's not like, oh my gosh, you need this. I don't know. Whenever I did swatch it, it did look amazing. But it's not giving me... Maybe it is. Okay. We like the glowiness to it. It's It does its job. She can stay. She can stay. Now, we're going to be using the Rose Ink. She's back. Hello. <laughs> and, okay, this brand I have literally never heard of in my life. Um, I don't know if it's a new brand, but we saw a huge display. The Sephora in Chicago, by the way, understood the assignment. Amazing. Um, they had a huge display and we were blending this and she was put into my car. And I usually have really blue and dark under eyes. This concealer, I usually, before Rose Ink, I was a Shape Tape girl. Um, it was heavy. I really liked it under my eyes because I need some extra help with coverage under my eyes. But Rose Ink, the formula is so thin, but it blends out like a dream. Okay, next I go in with my Anastasia Loose Setting Powder. She has been through it, so, but she's still here. And then I'm going in with my Morphe M438. It's a tapered brush. Why am I holding this? It's a tapered brush, so it's really going to get into the crevices of your eyes. So like whenever I look up, whenever I'm setting my eyes, I don't have product on right now. It really gets into that corner where you cannot reach. So if you're on the market for a tapered brush, this is your journey. This is your girl. My under eyes crease super easily. So I'm just going to look up, keep looking up and then go directly in. And then also I really tapped out some of that product. I don't like a ton of powder underneath my eye just because it makes me feel crusty, dusty, nasty whenever I talk to people. I feel like I'm very animated whenever I talk to people so I'm always using my eyes. And I don't like to feel like there is something holding me back underneath my eyes, especially since that skin is so thin. Then I go in and I lightly set the rest of my face because we still want that glowiness to the rest of our face. So this is the Nudegasm face palette. This is the mirror that I've been using this entire time. But this is the most amazing face palette on the face of the earth. I have my contour, my bronzer. Um, I don't know if I should even show it, but no, I'm not. No, I'm not. I'll just put a picture for you guys because mine is damaged. She's She's been dipped into a few times. So I usually take um, shade number three. This is the sculpting. And then randomly, this I was this was stolen from my mother, but this is the most amazing contour brush on the face of the earth. It was the it Cosmetic Brushes for Ulta. And I think this was a, sorry, I just read foundation. A holiday brush, but it's a foundation. I use it for my front contour. There we go. I use it for my contour. And it fits so perfectly under the hollows of my cheek. When I'm working with cream contour under my actual like powder contour, I really try to tap out the excess pigment. And I really try to tap this in to where I can build the color rather than swipe and swirl around on my face because I don't want to ruin my makeup. And again, we want to go for the glowy look with a set face because 
we do not we that's what we believe in i'm sorry i just do little itty bitty tapping motions and it might take some time for you guys to do this yourself but i think it makes a really pretty blending moment okay jawline snatched amazing okay she's been through it if you guys cannot tell that she's been through it i literally just ordered the ariel morphe collab brushes literally the whole nine yards because it's just overdue for new brushes um but anyway this is the morphe e47 this i don't think ariel had an i don't know i watched the video he did on nikita dragon and the brushes looked amazing and we all know ariel is a perfectionist so I just thought I needed them, which they probably are a need, but I did not see if he had a nose contour like this. Is I don't even know if this is considered a nose contour, but I use it as my nose contour, but I also have the Morphe X Jaclyn Hill collab, and I really do like those brushes, but she has this brush in her. Maybe you guys need to see it. Okay, there's the front, so it's super thin, and there's the side. But anyway, it literally just gets your nose contour so good and it's so easy and so fast. I feel like I see a lot of people spending a lot of time on their nose contour. This just makes it so much faster. Okay, so what I do for nose contour is I usually take the pointy end and I place it down. I usually just stamp it down first. Okay, it looks a little crazy right now, but do the same to the other side and depending on how skinny you want your nose obviously just make the lines closer together and then i kind of start blending down with a light hand you do not want to start scrubbing your nose and messing up your foundation underneath okay and then we're literally done if anything from this video you get I suggest the E47 or there's an eye blending brush makeup that I literally force all of my friends to get because it is that good. I'm always going with my Brow Wiz from Anastasia. You guys have been new about her. You've nothing new here. And lately I feel like my brow hairs have been growing like crazy. I usually go from the beginning and I draw the teeniest, tiniest line with the lightest hand possible. And then I also kind of drag out the tail at the end. So this is what we're working with first. As you can tell, we like her. She's not the moment, but we're going in with the other side of the brow. Everyone always has a brow that behaves better than the other brow. This is the brow for me. So I usually start off with the hardest brow because I don't know, I just wanna start off fighting during the day, I guess. So it's the same thing here. Draw under your brow, just a wee little line. I'm a little bad, anyway. Okay, I got a little heavy handed there, but no big deal. We do have a spoolie. So if you do mess up and you think that you cannot blend her out, your spoolie will always be saving the day for you, Miss Mams. And then the part where I said I went a little heavy handed, you can literally just brush up and diffuse it. So as you can see, I've diffused the front part of my brow not the end yet, but that little spot of heavy handedness, <laughs> is that a word? Anyway, um, is gone and it's a cute little moment. I usually don't diffuse the ends of my brows as much just because I like to draw in faux hair, little hairs. I like to draw in little hairs for my brows at the end. And then going in again with Anastasia brow pen. And then we are drawing wee little hairs. 
I will not be talking during this process because of this requires full concentration. Okay, and then towards the front, I'm actually gonna get my newer brow pen because she has a little more product at the, at the end. Can I not talk? Am I having a stroke, honestly? Oh, okay, so this is this. It probably doesn't have more product in it, honestly. It's just a darker shade, so this is in shade Chocolate, and I think this goes well with my actual color of my brow hair, so I'm really light-handed when it comes to the darker shades because I really want to use the very... I don't even know if this is going to be focusing in. The very, very tip of this brow pen to draw in little hairlines. So I usually do it where like product isn't going on for me. So for me, that's right here, a little towards the tail. Then usually like I'll leave that alone and that's it. But for the front part, this is the time where I just stop talking because it's hard out here. I drew in some fake hairs towards the front and you can see it's just a little bit more shaped than this part of my brow. Honestly, if I wanted a more natural look, I would probably just use the brow wiz and just leave it at that and draw in maybe some more around the tail. But today we're not doing that. That's not the journey today. But going in to the other side, again, I'm logging off until I'm done. I feel like I need to recover after that. Okay, so what I usually do is I use my Morphe M432 brush and I usually coat both sides with concealer. So the brush kind of looks like this. So she's coated. And then we like to easily, steadily, slowly draw a line under the brow to clean up the little mess ups. I mean, I think it's mostly on this brow, but would I not do it over here? So I literally just drag the brush and the straight edge of this brush really makes it easy to guide your hand to clean up the brows. Okay, so this is what the brow looks like. Um, not blended down. <laughs> so now we're going to go in and blend down. So we really have to be careful where we place the brush because it's blending the concealer down. And that is the brow cleaned up. I'm liking it, we're loving it. So we're done with brows. And then I go in with some brow gel and for the moment, we are loving Patrick Ta, what's she called? Hello? Four Brows Major Brow Elimination Gel. Oh, okay, SMR. So going in and pushing the brow hairs up. So we really set it in, especially where we drew out the wing at the end. And then I even go in with the bottom side. So the brush has a little like pokey side and then it has a softer side like a flatter side so I go in with the flatter side when it's a bit dried down and I push the brow hairs even more into place. This is the brush that I said you need. This is the Jaclyn Hill JH30. You can tell she's been through it. This is the most amazing blending brush ever it's for transition shades so what i usually go in and do what i've been loving lately actually is doing a lighter shade just blending that all over the lid and then going in with the transition shade i feel like that really sets off the eye and makes the eye makeup go on that much smoother um i'm going in with the patrick Ta four eyes um the only thing i hate about the palette is it shows your fingerprints it makes it look so nasty but it's so clean and sleek. Anyway, at the same time, going in with the shade Divine and putting this all over my lid. I usually don't tap it off because this is going to be the shade I put it on before my transition shade. It's just a cute little shimmer moment. I've also been seeing where a lot of people have been taking like a very light shimmer and putting it over an eye look after they're, they finish. I haven't tried that. I don't know if that's my journey, but I'm open to it. 
And then I'm going in with the shade Transition, ew, because it's our transition shade. Um, this palette has went through it. These shades blend like a dream, like I've never had before. If you have been considering getting the Patrick Ta palette, get it. It is amazing. It's always sold out, I feel like. So if you ever get your hands on it, you need it. So taking transition shade and just buffing that all across the eyes and always, always, always remember to go in with a lighter hand. So lightly going in. As you can see, we have some color. This is really gonna tie in the rest of the eye look. So I feel like I have a really big space for my eye makeup, which I appreciate. Thank you, mom and dad. What just happened? A shade just fell out of my palette. Going in with shade absolutely for my second eyeshadow piece. Wow, shade. Oh my gosh. Anyway, having a stroke. So I really go in and I put this under the transition shade. I have a little too much product for my liking over there, so I'm moving over here. And then we're gonna blend her back out. So this really stays kind of, I like to tell people I have four sections of my eye. So I really try to stay within the three fourths and outer edge of my eye. So I don't bring it into the very corner of my eye. I usually take it to a little before the mid of my eye. Okay, cute little moment. Then, oh, I we used uh, the brush JH34, JH34 for the second blending brush. I go in with a Lexi 209 brush. This is the shader brush, and it's really a really nice and dense packing brush. So I use shade, gotta close it or something will fall out. Okay, I use shade Mother. And then, so she's packed on in here. I go in to the, I wanna say, three-fourths of my eye I'm going back in with my JH30 this is Holy Grail Unique brush again and then blending that out with the transition and with the second shade also I did not dip into any product. This is just what is left over from the transition shade and we are blending. Going in with shade Scandal and we are putting that in the very corners of our eye. So this is a very dark brown shade and I'm literally just doing it on the very outer V. I'm not going to take it all the way into my eye. We want it to look seamless. We want it to look blended. So we are at the very V of our outer eye. Okay, and then we are picking up our JH30 again and blending this a bit more. I think we're looking pretty blended, so I'm very happy about how this is coming together. Okay, we love this. So now I'm going to go in with a packing brush, probably the Luxie one that I just had. Um, I'm not putting any product in it because the, the shade... Um, Mother was pretty dark, so I'm not going to dip back into it. I'm going to use what's left over and just pack it on my lower lash line. This really helps my eyes open up and seem more awake. So this is always a part of my routine whenever I'm doing eyes. Like, look at the difference. I love that. And then I usually take that about three-fourths into my eye under the lower lash line. So as you can see, it makes my eyes look way wider, way awake. We love that for me. Then I'm going to go in with a different palette. Okay, this is the Pat McGrath Labs. And this is part of, I want to say it's a holiday. I don't know. It's a, I think it's a holiday price. It was on like the holiday display whenever I got this at Sephora. So this is Pat McGrath. Usually they are a penny and a half, but also they're worth it. I've never owned a Pat McGrath eyeshadow palette until this little thing. And wow. I do love her a lot. So I'm gonna be going in with shade Rose Venus. That shade. 
right there so it looks really scary and i would not i don't know what made me gravitate towards this shade but it looks brown it looks not cute at the moment this is how it looks like on the finger and then this is how it looks swatched so it's a cute little bronze moment but it has flickers of pink i don't even know if you guys okay i'm just gonna do it on my wrist it has flickers of green and red literally so cute and it looks stunning on the eyes so that is what we're gonna do for the lid shade and then i'm using an anastasia 18 um packing brush i think this is actually a concealer brush but i'm using it to pack on shimmer first of all i barely tapped that look at that oh my god you're fired okay so this is going on amazingly i feel like most shimmers really piece <laughs> I was gonna say piece out but I really don't mean it like that but fall on to my lid and don't say where they need to stay this is the perfect formula for a shimmer shade you're fired this is amazing you're arrested oh my god okay Pat McGrath okay she did it okay I think this is all I'm gonna do for that um, Miss Pat McGrath, you did something with this palette. For inner corner highlight, I like to go in with this shade, Heavenly Body. So I'm going to swirl my JH38 brush around in the little shimmer and I pack it in to the inner corner of my eyes. And you can already tell my eyes already look way more awake and the pop that it gives the inside of my corner literally finishes off the rest of the eyes. I go in then with my Charlotte Tilbury face palette. I guess I'm taking my finger because I don't have my highlight brush with me. Going in with my pointer finger, swirling that around in shade one. And I'm going to do this on the tip of my nose. Then I'm going in with number one still and then patting this around on top of the nude sticks glow. And that is a cute little glow. I do like that. Okay, I'm going in with the NYX lip pencil in shade hello nude beige and then i'm gonna go in with the charlotte tilbury lipstick in very victoria this is usually my go-to lipstick shade it's just the prettiest nude and neutral it goes with absolutely everything and it just charlotte tilbury is top tier lipstick like look at that it's almost my lip shade amazing Going in with mascara using L'Oreal Telescopic before lash extensions. This is what I would stick to. This would be my tried and true. So this is what we're using. I think this is the finished look. Yay. I'm really happy about how this turned out. A lot of this was new products for me. So they all passed the test too. So A plus. Now I'm going to go... Wait, do I want a lip topper? Just for the one time? Way better. Okay. Um, no, I don't. Do I? Fine. I'll do it. Finishing off the lips with Fawn Beauty Fall Ghoulie. I don't think this is available anymore on her site, but she does have really pretty nude shades too. But this is my go-to Fawn Beauty shade. The way this actually like seeps into your lips, amazing. Okay, I should have done this before I put on the lip topper, but I'm going in with the one size until dawn. This is life changing. I'm telling you, if you wear a mask and you wanna wear makeup, this is your setting spray. The most amazing thing on the face of the planet. She does smell strong though. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, this is the finished look. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm so very excited to be starting off this YouTube journey. Um, stay tuned for future videos. Cannot wait to show you guys everything and anything else. See you guys.